In this video, we will show you how to replace your front lower ball joint on the Chevy Trailblazer. This is part of your front suspension located behind your front wheel. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. Safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so your wheel's off the ground with the suspension hanging. Once you've done that, we'll continue on to removing the center cover, all six of our 19 millimeter lug nuts, and then the wheel. Now that we have the wheel out of the way, let's have a look at our outer tie rod end. We have to remove this from the steering knuckle. It's gonna be very simple. We'll remove this locking cotter pin, remove the nut, give the knuckle a couple loving bonks just so we can bring this down so we can safely remove it. We'll set this aside. We'll use our 21 millimeter to remove the mounting nut. Now, once I have that off of there, it's always a good idea to give it a close inspection, make sure it is reusable. We'll start it back on just a couple threads here. Give this a couple loving taps. It will break free, but having the nut on there prevents it from falling down and potentially hurting you. Now that we have that out of the way, Let's pay attention to our ABS wire. That's mounted directly to the frame. We're going to have to disconnect it from the frame, the control arm, and the steering knuckle. We'll start at the frame. For this connector, you'll find that you have a gray locking tab. I'll make my way right into the center here, remove that gray locking tab, and we'll give it a close inspection, set it aside. You do need to reuse this. If it's broken, replace it. Now we need to go ahead and unlock this. Right where my thumb is, there's a locking tab. Squeeze that in and separate it. A quick inspection on each side to make sure there's no corrosion and we'll continue on by prying this out of place. For this, you can use a trim tool or a screwdriver. We'll follow it up here. Pull that out of there. Once again, if you needed to, you could use a trim tool. Pop that out, make our way up here. Separate it from the steering knuckle. There we are. Now this cable does make its way right behind the knuckle here. It's held in place to a bracket that we will remove along this side. We'll use some pliers, just carefully squeeze in on this. We don't want to break it because we have to reuse this area. Slide that out. Now the next thing you want to do is tie up this wiring harness so it does not get damaged in any way. Let's use some tape. Now in that same area that we removed the bracket for the ABS wire, we also need to remove the bracket for the brake flex hose. Use a 10 millimeter to remove both of the bolts. Now we can make our way along the front side of the knuckle here. We're going to start removing the caliper and caliper bracket from the steering knuckle. You'll find that you have two 18 millimeter headed bolts holding this in place. We'll remove the pair. Carefully take the caliper out of place, inspect the brake pads, and then hang it aside, putting no pressure on our flex hose. There's one of our bolts. We'll go ahead and start this right back in just a couple threads while we remove the final bolt along the bottom. Well, this is off, go ahead and inspect those pads. As I had mentioned, if it looks like they're worn at an angle or damaged in any way, Now's a perfect time to start replacing your brakes. We'll set this aside. Now
Now we can remove the brake rotor. We'll give it a quick inspection and set that aside. Move along to your 36 millimeter axle nut. We'll remove this, use a hammer and punch in the center here and just break the axle free from the bearing. Now we'll make our way just below that area to the lower ball joint area. We're going to remove the locking cotter pin, remove that nut. We'll remove the nut, give it a close inspection and start it back on just a couple threads. Use a 22 millimeter for this. Now we can pause here and make our way up to the upper ball joint. To disconnect this upper ball joint, you'll find that you have a 15 millimeter pinch bolt that goes through from the front towards the rear. There's a 15 millimeter mounting nut in this area. Let's remove this and carefully break this free from the control arm. As you can tell, our ball joint separated from the upper control arm fairly easily. If yours did not, you can carefully use a chisel inside this area with a hammer and just separate it a little bit. Once you've done so, this should slide down and out. Take hold of your steering knuckle. Now we'll use a hammer down along the bottom of the knuckle where it connects to that lower ball joint. We're going to tap on this a little bit, causing vibration. It should drop down to that ball joint nut. Now we can slide this off of the ball joint and remove it from the axle at the same time. Remove the knuckle with your wheel bearing assembly attached and set that aside. With the knuckle out of the way, we have clear access to the top of the ball joint. Along the top of this, you'll find that you have a snap ring. You have to use snap ring pliers to remove this. We'll get right inside the holes of the snap ring, gently separate it and lift it up and out. Just be careful, this is under spring pressure. And give this a quick inspection and set it aside. We have a brand new one with our kit. If your ball joint has a grease fitting, remove that now. Ours is a 10 millimeter. We'll go ahead and turn this counterclockwise to remove it. And set that aside. Now to service this ball joint, typically you'd want to use a ball joint press to remove a ball joint and to install it. Now down along this control arm here, there really isn't much of a lip for three quarters of it, making its way all the way around to be able to put a cup on here and drive this out. So to remove it, you can either use a hammer or an air chisel or possibly both. As we continue driving this out, make sure you have nothing underneath here. We don't wanna damage anything or get hurt. And there it is, friend. Now that we have that out of there, clean and inspect the mounting hole on the lower control arm. We'll use some parts cleaner and a little brush. As you make your way around inside here, be careful for any burrs, you don't wanna cut yourself. If you did have to use sandpaper for any reason, you wanna be careful not to remove too much material, otherwise the ball joint could have movement. This looks fine, let's continue. Okay, friend, let's get ready to install our brand new lower ball joint. Now, the one thing that we want to pay attention to on the ball joint itself is the cotter pin hole. We want to make sure that we have that facing front to back. If you put it like this, you're going to have a small issue trying to install the cotter pin when you're done. Now, as we start bringing this up into position and we start setting up our ball joint press, it's important to make sure you have a cup up along the top that does have a hollow area in the center. So when this ball joint comes up into the proper position, it will come up a little higher than the control arm itself. Let's get this aligned. Along the bottom here, we'll continue with a cup that only hits up against the base of the ball joint. We never want to press up against the stud or anywhere else, including the boot.
We'll continue on with the ball joint press, apply some pressure, driving this all the way up against the control arm. Before we remove pressure, we'll cause some vibration and then double check to make sure we're completely seated. During installing the ball joint here, we have to remember it's not a race. We're paying attention to multiple things here, especially this top cap here. We want to make sure that the adapter is not going to be covering where the ball joint needs to come up and through. That's very important. If it does, it's going to cause an issue with the ball joint itself. You can see it going up here. Obviously, we're being very careful for any pinch points. I don't want to stick my fingers anywhere near this while I continue. Quick inspection, it looks like it's bottomed out. Let's give it some vibration here. Now that we've confirmed that everything's seated properly, carefully remove your ball joint tool and the adapters. With the tool off of there, one more confirmation that we are properly secured and then we'll lock it in with our locking clip here. Now we can install our knuckle with wheel bearing. When doing so, we want to slide the axle directly along the back side of that wheel bearing. It should come right through. As we continue on, we'll also be aligning our lower ball joint with the bottom hole on the knuckle. Start on your ball joint nut. Now let's pay attention up along the top here. We need to align the upper ball joint with the upper control arm, bring the upper control arm down, and then we'll start through that pinch bolt. Maneuver this around as needed. We don't want to cause any damage. Now, if you're not replacing your pinch bolt nut, it's a good idea to use some thread locker. We have a brand new nut here. Let's get the torque wrench on here. Torque it to 30 foot-pounds. Let's start on that lower ball joint nut. We'll bottom it out. Now we can torque this to 79 foot-pounds. When doing so, you might find that the steering knuckle will want to turn on you, so I'll hold it in place using a long pry bar. Now that we have that torqued, the next thing we want to do is pay attention to the slots of the mounting nut in comparison to the hole on the ball joint stud. If for some reason they aren't aligned, continue tightening until the very next slot is. This one fits right through. Once we have that in there, we'll just peen it over. Perfect. Now let's continue on to prepare to install our brake rotor. Before we install the rotor, it's important to make sure you clean the mating surface of the wheel bearing hub and the backside of your brake rotor. Go ahead and use a wire brush and some parts cleaner. We'll apply some copper anti-seas here, and now we'll just clean the back side of the rotor and prepare to install it. Get the brake rotor on there. When I do this, I like to have a lug nut holding it in place so it doesn't move around and potentially hurt me as I continue. Let's install the brake caliper. Now we can move along to installing our caliper on the area. Go ahead and slide those pads right over that brake rotor. We'll get this in position, start in both of our mounting bolts, snug them up, and torque them to 118 foot-pounds.
Let's take hold of that ABS wire. We'll slide it through that bracket that we just mounted to the steering knuckle. Just press that in. Double check to make sure that's completely secured. You don't want it falling off and potentially damaging the ABS wire. Let's continue reconnecting that. Press this in here. This will go into the slot along the bottom of your control arm. Just need to find that. Let's get this one in here. Press that in. Put this on here. Press it in. Listen for a click. Put in your gray lock. Should slide right in here. Now we'll press this into the frame. Perfect. Time for the outer tire rod end. We'll start this in, snug it up, torque it to 44 foot pounds. The next thing we need to do is pay attention to the slots on the nut in comparison to the hole that goes through the stud of the tie rod end. We need that to be aligned. If for some reason it is not aligned, we need to continue tightening until the very next slot is, and then we can put in our locking cotter pin. All right, since ours is lined up, we don't have to continue tightening at all. We'll pin this over so there's no way the nut can loosen up on us while we're driving down the road. Now we can remove this. Install your axle nut. When you put this on, you never want to use an impact gun. If you were to over tighten this, you could cause serious damage to the bearing. We'll just use a ratchet and snug it up. Now we can torque this to 103 foot pounds. What you'll find is to prevent this from spinning, I used a pry bar coming across the lug studs, being extremely careful not to damage the threading. This comes diagonally down to the ground, holding it in place for me. Now we can install our wheel. Start on all six of your 19 millimeter lug nuts. We'll bottom these out, get the wheel back on the ground, and we can torque these to 100 foot pounds. With the wheel safely on the ground, we'll torque these in a crisscross manner. If you have a center cover, you can put that on now. Have a look along the back side. You'll find that you have a small diagram of a valve stem. This is the valve stem on your wheel. We'll align this area and tap it into place. Okay, friend, we've got our vehicle back together. At this point, take it for a road test, listen for funny noises, and get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.